Switzerland. This is where the Sauber F1 team is headquartered. It's my new home in Formula 1. Morning. Good morning, Marcus. Very welcome here. Thank you very much. Would you like to leave your jacket here? Yes, that would be nice. Thank you. Thank you. I was going to ask you, how, how do you say hello in Swiss German? Uh, well, usually we say Sally. 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 Okay, Sally. Sally, Monisha. Welcome, Marcos. <laughs> you seem to have prepared yourself very well. Yes, I'm trying, you know, I'm learning from Anita. You see some of the glimpses here? Yeah, it brings some memories. A, a lot of memories and, of course, the last one was a bit of a while ago in 2012, so I think we'd like to have some more again. And you see here in the middle we have our ultimate target yeah. and um, I'm sure it's going to be yours as well. So let's work on it together and seeing from where you are coming, you know, in your career, I think all ingredients are there to do so. This is where the ingredients were put together. Kumla, way up north in the middle of Sweden. Cars, driving, and more cars and driving. This little blonde boy was fascinated by anything on wheels and everything that's fast. But there was also always an element of fear. Det är någonting som jag tror vi har levat med. Fast jag är mer rädd ja. än vad Thomas är. Jag tycker det är otäckt. Mm. Även fast säkerheten byggs ju upp hela tiden, blir bättre och bättre. Men jag är rädd när han kör, i alla fall vid starten. Marcus picked up one trophy after another, speeding from one victory to the next. The awards are all in his parents' basement now. This is my storage of most of my prizes from when I was a kid. Actually, my first ever helmet, which I got when I was 10 years old. First ever go-kart race in 99. Swedish championship in go-kart. Also, I remember this one very well, because I got it in 2003, when I was uh, only 13. The prize was almost as tall as me. Uh, I was very short at that time. Now his little brother is after the prizes, except these trophies are upstairs. Hampus is 12, and his brother is both a hero and a teacher to him. Ibland får jag tips av honom. Det är inte dåliga tips i alla fall. He seems to listen because he's uh, usually trying to do what I tell him. Marcus's patron is Frederick Ekblom, a race driver and an old friend of his father's. Marcus was nine years old when he showed up at Ekblom's go-kart track and left everybody in awe. It was like unbelievable. And I told his father, you have to explore his, his, his talent and, and start to drive go-karts because this was, you know, the best by far I've ever seen from, from a young guy, first time in the go-kart. Och sen när, när Fredrik sa de där orden att vi skulle köpa en go-kart och så, så ja, jag tänkte vi, det var väl inget stort det där då, utan och sen när det, rullade det bara på. Marcus started racking up the victories, first in Sweden, then internationally. After 14 long years, Sweden is once again home to a Formula One driver. And once again, that driver comes from this sleepy little town. For some reason, uh, it's so many racing drivers comes from here, all the way back to, to Ronnie Peterson and, and yeah, me and Frederick Ekblom and Ted Bjork, which is a bit strange. I don't know why it is like that, but I think maybe it comes back all the way to Ronnie. It's very really unique that, that Marcus has taken the whole way. He has either a known motorsport family behind him, or a rich dad and mom. A normal family. A normal Verkligen vanlig arbetarfamilj då, som ändå har vi gjort det hela vägen så det är fantastiskt. Today he is the legitimate successor to Ronnie Peterson and a superstar in Sweden. These things always begin with an idea and it arises inside people's heads. I want to get to know these people and I want to experience the development of the Sauber C34 first hand up close and in person.